This engineering film report summarizes the progress of the T2V1 program during the last quarter of 1955 and includes research and flight test activities, mock-up demonstrations, the manufacture of the first production airplane, and its introduction to flight and static test. As a part of the development of the T2V1 landing gear system, a full-scale mock-up was built in the research laboratories at Lockheed. All components of the gear retraction mechanism were duplicated in this completely functional mock-up. Life cycle testing indicated the desirability of strengthening the main landing gear actuator lug. Nose gear retraction and extension tests revealed the need for flow restrictors to assure the nose gear's smooth operation with the main landing gear. As testing continued, hydraulic lines were increased in diameter to add power to the system and improve retraction and extension times. The nose landing gear operating mechanism was redesigned for increased durability and the door sequencing action was perfected. Also, a new feature permits manual release of the main landing gear inboard door so that gear maintenance can be performed without need for external power. The mock-up was then placed in an environmental chamber to test its operation at temperatures ranging from minus 65 to plus 165 degrees Fahrenheit. The arresting gear snubber assembly, which restricts hook bounce, was life cycle tested in the laboratory. An arresting load of 69,000 pounds was continuously applied to the assembly, and all test schedules were accomplished successfully including proof and burst pressure tests. In the recently revised T2V1 prototype, the drag chute compartment was removed and a lower rudder extension was installed in its place. This was done to evaluate the directional control and spin characteristics of the production configuration. An improved launching hook was also installed to permit the use of standard Navy pendants. Two angle of attack indicators were installed on the prototype to evaluate these instrument systems. In each of these, a rotary probe is mounted perpendicular to the skin of the airplane. A standard panel instrument then presents the true angle of attack in degrees. A development power steering unit, hydraulically powered and electrically controlled, was evaluated. The system is fail safe and provisions permit normal brake steering in the event of power failure. Full power steering is provided through an arc sufficient to turn the airplane about a point inside the wingtip. The nose gear steering system was designed for a maximum operating torque of 3,000 inch-pounds at the wheel. The steering system is turned on during the normal ground handling by depressing a switch on the pilot's stick grip. This provides nose gear steering through the rudder pedals. During arrested landings, a time delay circuit actuated by deck contact of the nose gear automatically energizes the power steering to prevent rotation of the nose gear during rollback. For close quarters deck handling, steering is immediately available to the pilot once the airplane has come to rest. During initial catapult and arrested landing tests, it was noted that an engine RPM droop of from 4 to 16 percent occurred. An improved pilot's throttle grip and a fuel control having an enrichment valve with lateral orientation were then installed. This virtually eliminated the RPM deviation and scatter noted during successive launchings.
In August 1955, Navy personnel inspected the T2V1 pre-production mock-up to review the power plant, electronic, and cockpit lighting installations. Minor changes agreed upon are programmed for early installation in production airplanes. The power plant portion of the mock-up inspection proved the maintenance, accessibility, and relative ease of installation of the J33A24 engine. The central fuselage location is based on 10 years of jet fighter design experience. In addition, the basic installation incorporates the added features of air impingement starting provisions and wing boundary layer control engine ducting and control valves. The engine and aft fuselage dolly used in the installation of the engine consists of an adapter bed mounted on a standard Navy transportation dolly. Screw adjustments provide accurate alignment with the fuselage mounts. T2V1 cockpit lighting has been carefully designed to provide maximum readability without distracting light reflections. Individual post lights are provided for panel mounted instruments. All basic cockpit lights, including the floodlights, are red. In addition, enunciator type warning lights and white map lights are provided in both cockpits. The T2V1 has the most complete set of electronic navigation and command radio equipment installed in any modern day trainer or fighter aircraft. All electronic components are mounted in the nose section so as to be completely accessible. T2V1 design incorporates a single point fueling system. As seen by the use of this clear plastic mock-up, the fuselage tank, the wing fuel tanks, and the tip tanks fill from a single point. Although the system feeds continuously as a single cell, provisions for individual tip tank feed control and dumping are provided to prevent wing heaviness which might be caused by delayed feeding. Through this single point pressure fueling system, the airplane can be completely fueled to capacity in less than five minutes. In this plan view of the tanks and cells, a highly simplified layout is presented to illustrate the sequence of fuel transfer by pressure from tip tanks to fuselage, by gravity to the wing cells, and by booster pumps to the engine. However, in the event of uneven feed from either tip tank, the pilot can restrict the flow from the lighter tank until balance is restored. If necessary, the pilot can selectively dump fuel from either tip tank. The fuel from both tanks can be dumped in less than two minutes. From the mock-up installation, Navy personnel were able to examine the cockpit escape system and determine its capabilities. The T2V1 escape system is completely integrated. A face curtain control on each seat will actuate the system to accomplish in-air escape from either cockpit. The controls in both cockpits are identical and may be operated independently. The seats used in this system are the conventional Navy face curtain ejection type and are designed to Buer specifications that use an NAMC type 1 catapult. Among the more unusual features of this seat is the off-center location of the catapult. This location affords maximum fore and aft knee clearance and comfort for the personnel in both cockpits. The seats are mounted in the airplane on three telescoping tracks. These tracks guide the seat during the full stroke of the seat catapult. This results in increased height and length of the seat trajectory and reduced seat tumbling during low speed ejections. The seats may be adjusted vertically a distance of five inches to provide comfort for personnel of varying heights. The adjustment is actuated by a momentary switch on the right hand console in each cockpit. Stirrup type footrests are mounted on the seat to provide foot and leg support during ejection. The footrests are spring loaded so as to remain in contact with the cockpit floor regardless of the vertical adjustment of the seat. Upon ejection, the footrest swings aft and down to retain foot support and provide maximum personnel knee and toe clearance. 
The heart of the T2V1 escape system is the face curtain control. All of the normal functions of ejection are controlled by this mechanism. In the stowed position, this control has approximately five inches of free travel before any of the functions of escape are performed. This feature is designed to prevent inadvertent actuation of the system once the ground safety pin has been removed. Ejection from the T2V1 airplane is accomplished normally by a continuous extension of the face curtain handle. The face curtain handle is connected to a drum in the headrest. The rotation of this drum performs each of the functions of ejection in their proper sequence. If during the normal ejection sequence the canopy fails to jettison, the normal travel of the face curtain handle will be restricted by the interlock to prevent the seat catapult from firing. At this point, the interlock may be deliberately overridden by the actuation of the emergency override handle on the left side of the seat headrest. Rotation of this handle releases the face curtain for further travel and permits seat ejection through the canopy as a means of last resort emergency escape. Ground test firings of ejection seats having canopy braking features designed into the headrest have shown that the chances of serious injury are slight Furthermore, records show that several successful ejections have been made in this manner from T-33A airplanes. As an integral part of the T-2V1 escape system, separate controls are provided to jettison the canopy for ground escape and intended crash landings without arming the ejection seats by displacement of the face curtain control. T-handle controls for this purpose are located on the forward left-hand auxiliary panel in both cockpits. In addition, a lanyard cable control is provided on the right side of the airplane, which is accessible to ground personnel for emergency entrance to the cockpit area. One of the more convenient features of this escape system is that it can be adequately safety by means of a single pin through the face curtain handle on each seat. In addition, a canopy remover valve ground safety pin is provided to completely safety the escape system during periods of maintenance activity in the cockpit areas. The T2V1 escape system is designed to current view air specifications and reflects the experience gained by Lockheed design personnel on the Navy TV2. This system is currently programmed for extensive tests of ground firings and underwater escape. The results of these tests will be the subject of future reports on the T2V1 escape system. In May 1955, tooling and fabrication was begun to initiate the T2V1 production assembly line. Personnel chosen for the production of the first T2V1 were selected from the crew of experimental mechanics who had worked for a full year on the metal mock-up of the airplane. Production line techniques reflect the experience gained from eight years of manufacturing TV2 and T-33 airplanes. The fuselage is built using the previously developed time-saving half-shell technique. This exposes the cockpit and plenum chamber areas and affords maximum working space for rapid installation. The half-shells are then joined by the completion of a single joint around the mid-fuselage. Again, based on T-33 and TV-2 fabrication experience, Ream Aircraft, Downey, California, was given the subcontract to fabricate the nose section. Beach Aircraft in Wichita, Kansas, is assembling T-2V-1 wings. Cessna aircraft, also at Wichita, is producing the aft fuselage and empennage. Carefully timed deliveries of subcontractor production items ensures the arrival of the necessary assemblies in the exact number and sequence demanded by the master scheduling of the Lockheed assembly line. The assembly line production moves forward smoothly. 
as completed components are mated and installed in pre-planned order. From the end of the assembly line, the first T2V1 was taken to the paint hangar, where Navy standard colors were applied. This paint job is similar to that provided on recently delivered Navy TV2 airplanes. The first production T2V1 was delivered to flight test on November 15, 1955. A second production airplane, the static test article, was manufactured with extensive strain gauge installations throughout all structural components. Information from this instrumentation will relay simulated in-flight load conditions to strain recording instruments. As an additional part of the static test program, many components will be separately tested to define their structural integrity. The plastic nose assembly, the seat, and the main landing gear door assembly were successfully tested during this report period. In preparation for initial flight tests of the first production airplane, extensive engine, ground run-up, and taxi tests were conducted to prove engine performance and ground handling characteristics. The flight test program will be run simultaneously with the static test program. As the static testing defines the structural integrity, the flight test program will become progressively more rugged. The results of the static test and flight test programs will be the subject of future engineering progress film reports on the Navy T2V1 airplane.